Good afternoon, dear panel, dear colleagues. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, in my report, I will talk about uh, uh, cryotherapy during uh, operations of, in soft tissues, tumors. It's not very widespread method. And it is uh, not used in every hospital, but uh, this method is available and it's quite cheap. Uh, so the previous presentations has uh, noticed the uh, uh, relevance of this uh, topic. Uh, microscopic residual uh, tumors and soft uh, tissues uh, can be, after the standard um, resection, can be uh, defined uh, in uh, 12 to 34 percent of cases. And um, if um, the planning was, uh, the in intervention was uh, planned insufficiently in more than 60 percent of cases. So surgical uh, type of treatment uh, becomes the most um, uh, common type of treatment uh, in uh, this case. So uh, let's talk about the stages of uh, cryotherapy, uh, the development of cryotherapy. So the first publication was um, presented in 60s of the 20th century by Markov, who created the classical um, cryodestruction of uh, tumors in bones and soft tissues. Um, it um, used uh, liquid nitrogen, and um, this approach uh, made a revolution uh, at that time. In 1995, uh, Mr. Montes uh, published the results of the study of uh, senior patients uh, with uh, uh, primary uh, lumia sarcomas uh, in hairy parts of the head and um, those who went through cryosurgical treatment. In uh, 1999, another research was published uh, about uh, 12 patients who um, who went uh, through cryodestruction with uh, further surgical operations of uh, tumors. And uh, they found that uh, cryotherapies are technically safe. Um, I would like to note that um, this is the first publication of uh, cryotherapy in oncology. In uh, publications today, I don't see a high level of uh, research in terms of multidisciplinary uh, research meta-analysis uh, devoted to cryotherapies in oncotherapies. And uh, results are usually centered with a um, small uh, number of patients. Uh, uh, in 2007, uh, researchers uh, done a study with 38 uh, patients um, who went through cryotherapy uh, in pre-operational re um, re uh, regimen. And in 16 uh, patients, necrosis of tumor was uh, 95%. And uh, then Tunkali and um, his lab showed other results. Uh, they confirmed that uh, partial regression uh, out of all patients happened in 19% of cases, in 30% of uh, cases uh, they found uh, uh, enhancements. In 2011, another interesting research of our Japanese colleagues who in experimental studies uh, showed that uh, cryo um, therapies have, uh, have immunology eff effect too. So it's type of uh, synergetic uh, effect in targeted therapies. In 2013, Lipa and uh, Al um, also done the research um, of uh, cryotherapy in patients with uh, relapses. 
of uh, tumors, and uh, they found uh, that only in 13 uh, patients out of 48, uh, cryoablation uh, was uh, effective or could be done in the condition that uh, all the um, schedule was followed, all the uh, recommendations. So the indications for, for cryotherapy in uh, soft tissue tumors, first it's a uh, neoadjuvant uh, therapy, pre-operation destruction, uh, most uh, in uh, sarcomas of soft tissues, uh, then uh, the um, influence on uh, borders of resections to uh, to make sure um, that uh, the surgery is uh, has uh, um, is uh, more beneficial for the organs and the tissues, uh, palliat palliative uh, treatment as well uh, to uh, to influence metastasis. If we look at uh, recommendations by NCCN and the Russian ones, they are very similar. And in these recommendations, cryotherapy is mentioned only in a disseminated uh, form of uh, sarcomas. Um, and uh, this type of method is uh, uh, is uh, recommended in disseminant uh, sarcomas of a uh, low uh, grade. Uh, the prospects uh, of the therapy. One of the um, recent uh, developments in the area uh, is uh, argon uh, equipment that allows to uh, reach uh, significant effects in cryotherapy. And a couple of words about our study that was a part of a um, a bigger research that included other methods too. Uh, there was a group of patients uh, that uh, uh, besides surgeries went through cryotherapy as well. These um, are the criteria of inclusion. The patients, uh, the study included uh, the patients of uh, non metastasis forms and um, uh, primary and uh, uh, relapse forms as well. So the goals of the study is um, increase in uh, elasticity of op operations, antiblastics, and decrease in uh, the amount of uh, resection of uh, soft tissues. The design of the study. Group one, the uh, main group, uh, included 41 patients uh, that um, went through tumor ablation and then the cryotherapy. Uh, various types of uh, cryotherapy, and then uh, the second group uh, of patients that went only through surgeries. Uh, the groups were equal in terms of uh, age of patients and um, uh, statistical differences uh, were accounted for. Uh, the main principles of cryotherapy the period of cryotherapy was uh, no less than three minutes. Uh, the uh, main, uh, the localization and um, the, the principle of um, maximal uh, covering of uh, crea applicators uh, was used and uh, it was uh, fast, uh, rapid um, crea uh, effect. And uh, then additional cryotherapy was uh, used. Uh, on this slide, you see the percentage of uh, post-operational uh, study of histological material in quite a uh, high percentage of uh, uh, cases. We see necrosis of the tumor uh, almost in 93% um, of all cases. 
intraoperational cryotherapy was uh, done uh, covering the zones of uh, magistral um, vascular and nervous nodes and uh, was done in eight patients and um, we uh, found neurological deficit in uh, these uh, types of uh, patients. These neurological disorders were occupied by uh, conservative therapy, and uh, this was uh, um, related, correlated with uh, these international norms and standards. In 33 cases, patients of uh, uh, main groups uh, were, um, so we observed in them um, the tumor tumors in uh, bo bones uh, of uh, the, the structures of the bones. All the patients were evaluated in terms of uh, in in. Um, uh, the the uh, participation so two groups uh, showed uh, different uh, results uh, R zero resection R one resection R two uh, resection when so the results uh, were different depending on the resection zone uh, post operational complications you see that um, they are. Uh, quite uh, relatable, the results are relatable. Uh, paresis of peripheral nerves, uh, you see in group one, four. In, uh, we also use uh, endoscular methods in this group, but as for all the other parameters, um, bleeding and uh, others, uh, they are very, they were comparable. As for the risks of relapses, uh, patients that went through uh, cryo uh, therapy, uh, the and um, comparing to the group uh, that uh, didn't go through cryotherapy, the risk uh, uh, decreases. So the results, cryotherapy is safe and effective uh, methods in to increase um, ablation of surgical uh, operations when performing cryotherapy we need to take into account the zone of the destruction of tissues the zone of um, full necrosis uh, doesn't uh, cover more than uh, two uh, centimeters in standard uh, cases. Um, and also in case of uh, pre-operational uh, reduction, so it's possible to uh, provide pre-operational reduction of uh, um, circulation in the zone of um, um, operation. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Thank you for the presentation. I have a quite uh, easy question. If uh, in recommendation cryotherapy is recommended only in uh, uh, most common cases, how were you able to use cryotherapy in very um, in in a case uh, of rare uh, tumors? How were you able to include these patients in your study? So, what was the ethics? Um, of course, uh, there is an ethical committee in our hospital, and uh, we went through all the procedures. So, how did you um, support uh, the uh, the cryotherapy in these rare cases, even the even that they are not uh, indicated? In even in cases when the surgical operations are enough. So what did you say, that it's a new method, or how did you support your views? So our therapy was an, um, a supportive therapy for the standard surgery. 
and um, in many cases uh, tumor cells uh, appear even in radical surgeries so that's uh, that was our argument for cryotherapy you're talking about tumor cells and uh, we are talking about elimination of tumor cells so even so even so they they won't this type of cells won't be implanted uh, i don't agree with you so uh, do you now use this um, uh, therapy in uh, many of your patients i wouldn't say so so it's not a general uh, rule therapy for us uh, hello my name is Hush dr hushit i'm from iraq i will try to speak in russian and i have four questions uh, about cryotherapy uh, i can speak in english too if necessary so uh, the first question is uh, last year i've heard about cryotherapy and i uh, read about it and uh, in publications I, uh, in in many cases, I saw that cryotherapy is kind of an experiment, and here you show that uh, you are testing this uh, therapy on your patients. Experiments and systematic reviews, facts, and after that we use it on patients. So I haven't seen anything about cryotherapy um, usage in in real patients. So, and this is a live person and uh, he maybe doesn't have much time left and we use the therapy on him. So is it a systematic uh, review or what was it? The second question, when you choose a patient, uh, how do you persuade the patient to uh, participate in this? What do, you, what do you say, that it's a new type of treatment, that it's an experiment, or you don't ask his, him at all? And the third question, with this uh, type of therapy, uh, what is the place, what place goes to the chemotherapy? And do we still need it? And the fourth question, uh, does it, um, so what are the indications? Are there any concrete indications for this type of treatment? Thank you. I would, um, as for the first question, there is uh, no systematic review on the, um, on this topic, so most of the research is very much experimental, and it's true. As for the patient, the second question, we uh, discuss it with the patients. We explain that uh, we are planning to use this uh, method. We explain the details and uh, the features of this method, and I don't remember any patient who refused uh, this type of research. And um, uh, this is done in the, f it's, it's a trial, so uh, uh, we, uh, we explain to the patient that it's, it's not a standard procedure. The third question, chemotherapy, uh, so we didn't work with patients with a metastasis that uh, have to go through chemotherapy. So in our research, uh, our research didn't include patients uh, that went uh, through um, chemotherapy, so it was a trial. So our trial included patients with uh, tumors uh, of a size more than five centimeters, and uh, the cases where it's hard to um, to reach a total resection of all malignant tissues. And um, um, as for the last question, M0, M2 uh, participated in the study, so these were patients without distant uh, tumors, uh, distant metastasis. I have another question. Uh, you feel that uh, the audience uh, uh, got uh, reacts 
and um, so this method is not widespread and uh, this method is quite old-fashioned too so you don't have uh, uh, you don't have opportunities for chemotherapy and uh, so you follow some kind of protocol that has to be legally protected. So it has to protect you from such questions that we are asking now legally. Have you, well, made all legal arrangements? Did you receive any legal permits to conduct such trials? This is question number one. Question number two. Is as follows. About three years ago, there was a conference in Bologna where our Chinese colleagues introduced their uh, experience in using cryo destruction of non operable uh, tumors and uh, thermoablation and ultrasound methods of impact on gigantic non-operable uh, tumors. It was uh, desperate medicine uh, and the risk of a surgeon. In China, the population is 1.5 billion. In our case, you are writing, you, you, I'm sure no one knows the authors uh, of, uh, at least the names of the clinics should be mentioned. So the question, the first question is whether the uh, whether you are legally protected and what's the role of uh, oncological center of Saint Petersburg in these trials. This is the question to the leader probably. <clears throat> so my answer is: for each trial, there must be a decision of the scientific board. Is there a decision of a scientific? I I don't think there is. No, dispensary doesn't have, but it has ethical committee. Anton Viktorovich, these are different things, absolutely different things, because ethical committee is one thing, but, uh, you know, the experiments in the hospital is something different uh, from the ones in dispensaries. I wouldn't like to offend people who are in research and science, but uh, there are administrative uh, uh, limitations. Uh, of course, someone should have sent the material to you, then to Moscow, and the experiment should have been started. But uh, uh, these are quite, yeah, uh, interesting things. Just small comment. It's not for the first time that we hear about the date on cryo destruction. This is St. Petersburg School, and there are great achievements for sure, but uh, these issues raised are really reasonable. The risks are very high. It's like a snowball, and we have to have some protection from unjustified Deeds. Even if the method has high efficacy, the legal aspects that have been mentioned are primary. I have kind of a comment with regards to our Eastern European group. Whether well, we could try to influence creation of clinical recommendation. Of course, we can plan multi-center, well, Russian trial devoted to efficacy of cryo destruction. Why not? If we comply with certain terms, of course, we will resolve the issue with instrumentation, if equipment, with uh, dosimetry uh, measures, whether it is uh, uh, meters, uh, and after we have discussed everything, and all compliance procedures are implemented, then we could launch multi-center clinical trial. Yes, this is a proposal.